This week, I'm standing outside the building in St. James's Place, where 100 years ago, next Thursday, on the 2nd of November 1917, Lord Rothschild received a letter from the British Foreign Secretary, Arthur Balfour, setting out the support of the British government for Zionist uh, aspirations for a Jewish home in Palestine. That 67-word letter, the centenary of which we're celebrating next Thursday, is known as the Balfour Declaration. The Balfour Declaration is an important step in Jewish and Zionist history. It contained just 67 words. It had no legal effect and it defined no territory. And yet, it was the first step along the road that eventually led to the creation of the State of Israel. And it's significant because a hundred years ago it was the first statement of sympathy for Zionist aspirations for a Jewish home in Palestine by any government anywhere in the world and it had tremendous importance at the time and as a result it's a major, a major moment in Jewish and Zionist history. And so three years ago we decided that we would mark the centenary of this event as a community. Now if you look back at history, the legal effect to it was given by the San Remo Conference and the uh, League, of League of Nations mandate within two and four years. The territory was defined by the United Nations Partition Plan in 1947. But the significance of the support is something that we felt that our Jewish community should recognise. And so we thought that there were a number of benefits in doing that. Firstly, it was a perfect opportunity to talk to our community to, and to educate them on this important role and this important moment in Jewish and Zionist history. Secondly, it was an opportunity to bring the community together at events and messages that would allow them to show their pride in this important milestone being delivered by a government uh, of our country. And thirdly, it provided us an opportunity to align our message of pride that it was our government that took this step with what our government now is saying in their support of the State of Israel. And in Prime Minister's questions today, Prime Minister Theresa May confirmed once again to the House of Commons that the government will mark this centenary with pride. And so how can you be involved, if you want to, in the centenary celebrations. Well, if you go to the Balfour100.com website, you can see details of over 100 events that are happening between now and over the next uh, two to three weeks. Next Wednesday, November the 1st, there'll be a lecture delivered in London by the world-famous historian Simon Sharma. We will be streaming that lecture live at 8 p.m. next Wednesday, the 1st of November, on Balfour100.com. Just click on the resources section and you'll be able to see it. And you'll be able to watch it as well afterwards. And if you visit Balfour100.com, you'll be able to see a whole range of accessible information about this important moment in Jewish and Zionist history. There'll be a whole range of political events taking place next week. And next Friday and Saturday, the 3rd and 4th of November, it's Balfour Shabbat, where communities all around uh, the United Kingdom will be marking the Balfour centenary. The chief rabbi has written a special prayer that will be read out in Orthodox synagogues. So there's plenty of opportunity to get involved in this important moment and to reflect that 100 years ago, for a crucial period of months, the indefatigable campaigning of Zionist visionaries like Chaim Weizmann coincided with British national and foreign interest. 100 years ago next Thursday, British statesmen looked to the future in the midst of the First World War and aligned themselves with Jewish longing for the re-establishment of a Jewish home. 100 years ago, we as British Jews are proud that it was our government that took that first step and that it's our government that continues to be one of the most supportive friends of the Jewish State of Israel.